which cloud provider is the best provider to run your Kubernetes clusters? Now, I cannot answer that question because there are good reasons why you should use Google Cloud and equally good reasons to use AWS or Azure. So we'll change the question. Which cloud provider is the best one and it has to be cheap and the only thing that matters is Kubernetes. So today we are going to look at potentially amazing cloud provider that only cares about Kubernetes. This is the first time I'm using a cloud provider that is Kubernetes only. There is nothing else you can do but create Kubernetes clusters. We are going to take a look at Sivo and Sivo only manages Kubernetes clusters, nothing else. If you need a cloud provider for other things beyond Kubernetes, this is not the one Ignore this video, stop watching it, go somewhere else. But if you're using Kubernetes cluster for everything except maybe external third-party services, then Sivo might be worth a shot. It has few interesting things which we are going to see in a few moments and equally importantly, doesn't have much. And now you might say, hey, I do not want a provider that doesn't have much. But if all you need is a Kubernetes cluster, then you do not need much. You just need a reliable cloud provider that will give you Kubernetes as a service. And then you figure out what you're going to run in that Kubernetes cluster. So let's take a look at Sivo as a new kid on the block. It probably does not compete directly with Google Cloud and AWS and Azure and Alibaba because those are beasts that offer hundreds or thousands of services. It rather competes with a type of user that might want to use Linode or DigitalOcean and is only interested in Kubernetes, right? You do not need anything that is not Kubernetes itself. If you're not already registered with Sivo, go to sivo.com, fill in the form that is refreshingly short and you will get 250 bucks in credits. And that's absolutely amazing because as you will see later, with 250 bucks, you can run a lot of things in Sivo. That's how cheap it is, but we're going to get the prices in a second. Besides registering in Sivo, you should download Sivo CLI. It is not mandatory, you can do everything through the web UI, but I will show you both how to manage Kubernetes clusters using web UI and CLI. So download the CLI, unless you're a person who says, hey, I'm scared of terminals, I do not want to use terminals ever. Then there are two things I need to tell you. First of all, you do not need to use the CLI. Second, that's silly. You should learn how to use terminal CLI's commands and all those things. Okay, now that you're registered and you have the CLI installed, we can go to the dashboard and see what we'll get. Actually, you do not see much in Sivo's dashboard, at least not right now. It's showing you basically how much you owe and how much you have in credits and the list of events. Not really interesting. So let's jump into the Kubernetes section. That's the interesting one. Now, what I like about Sivo is that creating a Kubernetes cluster is as simple as it can get. There is not much choice. Now, for some people that might be a deal breaker, you might say, hey, I want a lot of choice because I like to tweak things. But for majority of potential Sivo users, simplicity is the key. You can specify the name of the cluster, how many nodes you want, networking, and the size of the nodes. That's about it, right? It cannot get simpler than that. One thing that I love about Sivo and really dislike about Google Cloud and AWS and Azure is that I know in advance how much it will cost, right? First of all, it's extremely cheap. Second, I know how much it will cost. There is no way that you can easily find out how much your GKE or EKS or AKS cluster will cost. In case of Sivo, you specify how many nodes you want and what is the size of the nodes. And you immediately know, okay, so this is how much it will cost monthly. No hidden costs, no surprises. And on top of that, look at those prices. That's cheap. That's extremely cheap. I could also select applications from the marketplace. I'm still not sure whether I like this part or not. We're going to skip applications for now and get back to them uh, in a few minutes. Actually, I will leave the default applications, which is, I think, traffic and maybe one or two more. Anyways, the only thing left is to click the Create Cluster button and watch it unfold. I should probably go and get coffee while this is happening. Or actually, even better, let's create a second cluster, this time through the CLI and see how that looks like. And there are two more things I need to figure out before I create a cluster through CLI. The first one is the region. We need to know in which region we want to run the cluster. And we can get regions by executing Sivo region ls. And as you can see right now, there are only two regions. 
United Kingdom, UK or US or New York. And we also need to figure out the size of the nodes we want to use and we can get the size of the nodes with the command CVO size LS. And we have a few sizes that we can choose from. Everything is very simplistic. You don't have like 57,000 different sizes of nodes. There are like five, six sizes for K3S. We are going to choose K3S nodes simply because K3S is CIVO. CIVO Kubernetes cluster is based on K3S, which is extremely lightweight Kubernetes distribution that is fully certified. It does everything that is expected from Kubernetes to do, yet it is extremely lightweight. And one of the benefits of that will be seen in a few moments when we start creating the cluster. So the moment of truth, the second cluster, this time created from the CLI, will be done through the command CIVO Kubernetes create, and then we specify the name of the cluster, the size of the nodes, how many nodes we want, the region where that cluster should be running, we want to save the configuration of that newly created cluster, we want to merge it with whichever other configuration we might have locally in our tube config, and I'm going to say yes to all the questions, and we are going to wait until the cluster is created. And the moment I hit the enter key, I will start the timer because I want to see how much time it takes to create a cluster in CIVO. And I'm going to go and get coffee for me and fast forward the video because I don't want you to wait for long until the cluster is created. Typically it takes anything between five minutes and uh, half an hour until a cluster is created in other providers. So let's see whether CIVO can beat that. That was bloody fast. That might have been the fastest Kubernetes cluster I've seen so far. It took 1 minute and 47 seconds to create a fully operational Kubernetes cluster. That might be the record. I'm not actually sure whether it is faster than Linode or DigitalOcean. I'm convinced it's faster than those. This is extremely fast and this shows how K3S helps a lot. I mean, that's not the only reason why this is fast, but K3S itself once the nodes are created, it takes maybe a couple of seconds to be fully operational. And we can see the results of that right now here. So let's take a look at the nodes that were created for us, just in case to be on the safe side. There we are. We got three nodes. Two of them are ready. One is still initializing. So Sivo was cheating a bit. It didn't take really one minute and 47 seconds. It probably took two minutes or so slightly over two minutes to have a fully operational cluster with all the worker nodes up and running. Nevertheless, that's still extremely fast. Now Sivo says it takes around 90 seconds. That's exaggerated a bit. It's not 90 seconds, it's closer to two minutes. Now, if we go back to the list of our Kubernetes clusters in the web UI, we can see that we have both of those clusters up and running. One created through the web UI, the other one created through the CLI. Doesn't really matter. Those are just two different ways to accomplish the same goal. And that goal is to create a cluster in a very simple, very easy way. Now, if we go to the DevOps Toolkit cluster, the second one, the one I created through CLI, we can see some basic cluster information, nothing really special over there. We can retrieve kubeconfig if we don't have it already, and we can see the installed applications. None of the applications were installed, at least not in the one I created through CLI, so let's go to the marketplace and see what we have there. We are still in early stages and Civo already has a decent number of applications available out of the box or not out of the box, but with a one click install. So let's install a couple of apps and see how that works. Let's go to monitoring and choose Loki and what else? Let's go with Prometheus as well and just click install apps. If you're looking for an easy way to install applications, third party applications in your cluster, this might be the easiest way ever. It reminds me in a way of cube apps, except that there are no parameters you can tweak. You cannot decide how those applications run. They're a single click installation type of applications. Now, whether that's good or bad really depends on your level of knowledge or understanding of Kubernetes. If you're already familiar, if you have experience with Kubernetes, you probably wouldn't install third party applications like this. Nevertheless, nobody's forcing you to install them like this. This is more a bonus aimed for people who want something extremely simple. For everybody else, hey, use Argo CD or Flux and then define your third party applications and your own applications in a Git repository and let them sync into your CIVO cluster. But if you want one click installation, this is it. Very similar to Cube Apps, as I mentioned before. 
So let's click install apps button and see what we'll get. And there we go, we got three applications. Traffic was selected by default, and then we have Locky Stack for logging, and we have Prometheus operator for monitoring. Now, these are still early stages of SIVO, so some of the things do not really work very well. Like date installed is pending. I mean, it's not pending, it was just installed a few seconds ago. And we tend to get some still basic additional information about that app or details, you know, hey, this is where it's installed, this is how you can access those things, and so on and so forth. It is probably intentionally minimalistic, right? This is not for people who want to tweak it, this is for people who want one-click installation. Or if you install applications through CLI, then it's one argument type of application. Hey, I want this up and that up and that up. And that's about it. That's all CEO is. Actually, there is a compute section and manage section and content section and uh, suggestions and account. Most of those things are not really that special or important. You're most likely not going to create VMs directly in CIVO. That would need to be a very special use case. Remember, CIVO is all about Kubernetes. I'm not even sure why they put compute there, why they added the option to create VMs directly. And the only thing left is to delete the clusters. I don't need them anymore. I just finished the demo. We're about to talk a bit more about CIVO, but let me delete those two clusters first. To begin with, I'm pleasantly surprised how fast Sivo is adding support for the ecosystem in general. Creating and managing clusters is a good example. You can do it through the Sivo Web UI or CLI, but it supports also Terraform, it supports Pulumi, it is about to get support for my favorite, which is Crossplane and so on and so forth. It supports a bunch of applications and it supports all major infrastructure as code type of tools. Unlike big cloud providers that focus on features and focus on the scope of things and all the zillion things that you can do, Sivo focused on simplicity and they nailed it. This is the simplest and fastest Kubernetes cluster you can create and potentially the cheapest one as well. So if all you need is Kubernetes, if your system does not need other stuff, you know, all the gazillion services that you get with AWS, then Sivo might be a good choice, especially, and this is very important, if you want it to be cheap. If you want something that is order of magnitude cheaper than Google and Azure and uh, AWS, Sivo is your thing. As long, and this is important, the only thing you need is Kubernetes.